So Anne uh, Marshall is getting ready to turn on her camera and join us. Anne Marshall and Lily Elliott are with us today. And I'm not sure if Dr. Christy Ehlers is going to pop in or not, uh, but she might make a surprise visit. So they, um, all three, work with Blue Stem AgriLearning Center at Fort Reno, um, at El Reno. And they have worked with us in the past. They've done some fabulous stops for us uh, with teachers when we've been on the road. And they always do a great job. Again, um, I'm Ann Marshall. Uh, I have, I come from kind of a science teacher background. Um, I have taught biology, earth science, environmental science, um, geology. Um, so that's kind of my background. Lily comes from um, an ag background. So I'm going to kind of start things off today and, um, and show you a few little demonstrations or things that you can do in your classroom. And then I will kick it over to Lily and she's going to show you a PowerPoint and talk about it from an ag standpoint. So with that, I'll give it to Lily and let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Lily Elliott, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at our Blue STEM program. Today, I would like to talk to you about teaching um, children to care for animals and basically um, how to have a successful program, and sanitation is the key. So um, with that, um, you, you probably can tell from the overview um, of our um, our topic today kind of feels fitting because we are kind of living in a new world um, with COVID and many of you will have to go back to school. Um, I know here in El Reno, they're giving three options. One is face-to-face -face learning, which that all depends on, you know, what things look like in the future. Um, they have a hybrid program and they have a completely virtual program. And I'm sure that many of you you are in the same boat. So um, with that, um, I just want to show you, because I've been a classroom teacher before, and you know, like they say, um, if you're a classroom teacher, you steal things from your home and bring it to work instead of vice versa. So we as teachers, <clears throat> oftentimes, um, we don't have a lot of resources to work with. And so we want to provide you today with some resources um, everything that I am going to show you today um, comes out of a um, checkout book that we have, and it is available to you if you want to check it out. Um, so everything that I'm showing you um, can be available to you, and we can get it to you. Um, Audrey is going to share with you a Google Drive, and every single thing that I'm sharing with you is in that drive and you can download it, print it, do with it as you like. Um, initially, you know, we all planned on seeing each other face to face and um, we're do doing things a little different today, but we did make everyone a, an amazing little note with all the stuff in it. Um, we have these, uh, these little laminated pictures that you can hang around your school um, and, you know, remind kids about um, the transfer of germs and how to wash your hands and all of that. All of these things are in the Google Drive and you can print them out yourself if you like. If you don't have the ability to do that, we don't want you to go without. So um, our contact information is also in the Google Drive and you can contact us and we will get, get one to you. Um, the first thing I'm going to start out with, and I'm just going to do a series of, um, of demonstrations, and some of which you might have seen before, and some of which are very, very simple, um, but it is something that you can replicate in your classroom. Um, many times when I start this lesson, I will go in a classroom, and I'll sort of introduce myself, and then I'll fake sneeze in my hand, and then I'll ask, you know, a, a student to shake my hand. Inevitably, they'll go, no. And then so that opens the conversation of, you know, germs and the transfer of germs, 
Belgians are spread through our mouth to our hands and how that can be um, you know, spread throughout the classroom. Another demonstration that I have, we just take baking powder and you can, I'm going to try to scoot back and hopefully this will translate, but you can, can you make this bigger so I can see what I'm um, Anyway, I just put a good amount of baby powder on my hand here and I mimic a sneeze. So I'm going to stand back a little bit or Lily will be covered in baby powder if I don't. But I literally go, and you can see how far it goes. <laughs> Lily looks like she kissed a flower back. Anyway, um, but it shows you know, how far uh, how far germs can be transferred. Um, by the way, again, all of these things are in our coats for you to use in your classroom. Um, another really great demonstration. I have a just a bottle of water here, and um, I take um, I take construction paper. So I have some construction paper here, and in front of the construction paper, I have a Kleenex. So again, I'm going to let Lily hold this, and I'll try not to spray her. Um, but again, I'm trying to mimic a sneeze, and so Lily, if you'll hold this way, yeah. So yeah, there you go. Okay, and I'm just going to spray a mist right on there. I'll do it twice. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but behind there's there's mist all around here. You can see where it's been sprayed, but behind the Kleenex is completely dry. So again, this shows students when you use a Kleenex when you're sneezing, when you're doing things like that, it actually works. Um, you could say the same about wearing a mask. Um, the next thing that I want to share is um, we have, this is also in our tote uh, that you can check out, but we have, it's called Fake Germs, and it's just a lotion. And um, so this is very harmless, but this fluoresces, fluoresces under a black light. We have lots and lots of black lights in our tote as well. And what you do is you just have the students put uh, the lotion on their hands. And Michael, I'll have you turn the light off. And we'll do the best we can to show you how this works. And I don't know if you can see very well, but this um, fluoresces a blue color whenever you put it on your hands. So we have the students do that. Then we give them a wash basin full of uh, water with soap, and we have them wash their hands as they would normally. Usually students or people in general really rush through the hand washing process. They say, um, you know, that you're supposed to do it for at least two minutes. I know very few people that um, actually wash their hands for two minutes. But when the kids come back after they wash their hands, inevitably you'll see it still around their cuticles, in the cracks of their fingers. Um, you know, I have wrinkly hands, so in the wrinkles or whatever. And it shows, you know, how good of, or poor of a job, a good or poor, um, that they're doing washing their hands. Um, one, another thing that you can do with this, because this is quite, it, it's kind of pricey. Um, I think, I don't know, I don't know what it costs, but I, all of which is free to you because we provide it for you. But if you wanted to do this in your classroom and you wanted to buy it yourself and you wanted to conserve it, another thing you can do, or you can do it as an extension, is have one student at the beginning of class and you don't let the class know one student, have that student be your helper and have them put this liberally all over their hands. And as they're going through class and touching papers and touching doorknobs and touching everything that students touch, at the end of class, 
it's fun to turn off the lights, look at the black light, and see every single place that um, these fake germs, you know, travel to. Um, okay, and another, yes. We did have a question yes. come through, so I was sure. just going to interrupt sure. real quick. Go ahead. How yes. do they check something out? If they wanted to check a little kid out, how do they do that? Okay, I, I will. Um, I have information on that, and I'll talk about it um, at the end. And okay. I have a whole okay. paper with our contact stuff on it. So all you have to do is call us, give us your their address, and um, sometimes you know we live kind of we live in El Reno. Obviously, it's in the center of the state. So if it's just in Oklahoma City, sometimes we just drive it over and pick it up. But yes, that, that is available, and um, I will share all of that with you. Great. Thank you so much, Ann. Uh -huh. um, okay. The next thing I want to share, um, this is all over Facebook and all over the internet, but I'm sure you've seen this picture before, and this is a Petri dish, and this is somebody, so this is the control, obviously, and someone has popped on this. Now, um, also this picture is up on the Google Drive and you can use it as you like. I actually mimicked uh, this experiment, so if you'll hand me my Petri dishes. Um, I only did this three days ago. Um, this is my control and it's still clear. This one, I don't know if you can see very well, but it's, I'm starting to go bacteria here on, um, and this is my experiment. So I actually sneezed on this, and I was sure to, you know, when I sneezed, um, you know, this is gross, but, you know, make sure there was stuff coming out of my mouth um, and, and put it on the pea dish. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to mimic this, and I have all of the supplies in um, the kit that you can use. Uh, Petri dishes like this can be kind of expensive, so I price these at, um, you get five for twelve fifty. You can see that it wouldn't go very far in a classroom unless you did it as a demonstration. In the kit, can you can read the um, plain ones? Yeah. No, this, this. Hey, Ann, I'm kit, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Okay. Your your screen is frozen. I'm not sure if maybe your hotspot possibly could be adjusted or something. Okay. And everyone, we apologize. They are out in the middle of nowhere, and yeah. they're doing their best with the hotspot. So um, I know all of us as teachers me. know what it's like, but um, they're doing their best. Am I still frozen? You're no longer frozen and maybe just moving slow because you are lagging. Okay. So okay. slow moving might help okay. a little as well. So move slower. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to move slow. Okay. So this is uh, what we have in the kit. These are just plain. There's nothing, in, no medium in, in them. Um, so I included a recipe on how to make um, potato auger, and it's, it's very easy to make. I know it sounds scary, but it's actually a fun experiment and activity that you can do in your classroom with your students. Um, so what I did, I don't know if it, about you guys, but I don't have a... Um, I don't have access to an autoclave, and few of us do. You know, we don't have autoclaves just laying around in the garage. But it's important that when you make this medium that it is sterile, because if there's germs in here, that's the germs you're going to be growing, and it, and it won't be a good experience, experiment. So um, in the, the Google Drive, I included this uh, recipe, and this recipe is actually the Ann Marshall recipe. Um, I did it, um, and the way that I did it, I did it exactly like this. Instead of using an autoclave, um, I used a pressure cooker. So a lot of us have pressure cookers. Um, and so basically, um, you follow this simple recipe and you're using potatoes, you will supply your own potatoes. Um, but in the kit, there is dextrose powder and 
you only need like a tiny little bit. This would last forever and ever and ever. Um, there's auger powder, and then you'll just need the potatoes. Um, so that is all included in there. Um, another thing that 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 you can do cheaply. Oh, and let me just show you how what it looks like when it comes out with potato auger. So um, this I did in the pressure cooker, and this is all just mixed up. You can see I used a jelly jar just like I was going to can, and I put it in the pressure cooker for 15 minutes. And then this you can now pour into the Petri dish and let it dry. Um, if you're in a hurry to dry it, you can put it in um, like a, a, a food dehydrator. That works really well. But once it's dry, can I see the parafilm? Um, once it's dry, you want to be sure and close it up and um, put parafilm around the, the outside of it and put it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. Now, once I have coughed or touched or done whatever I'm going to do to this, the way that I incubate it is I simply just put it in a cabinet or a closet on a shelf in the dark and I just let it go for about... Um, three or four days and I check on it every day. You can take pictures or you know, however you want to do it. Um, once it grows, you can actually, without a microscope or anything, have the students just count the colonies and that's kind of fun to do. Um, but there's lots of extensions that you can do with this and it's something that you can use um, you know, for other experiments. Um, okay, another thing, can you hand me the bread? Another thing you can do cheaply, and this is all over Facebook and um, the internet as well, is you simply can take a piece of bread. And so here's my experiment. Here's my control. Um, I did this on, it, it does take a while. It's not something you can do overnight. I put these in on Friday and I put them in a Ziploc bag and I just taped it to the wall. And, um, but you can see here on my experiment, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's starting to mold right here. My control is still pretty much the same. But when you do this, you want to be sure and use gloves or a utensil to pull the bread out because once you touch it with your hands, of course, you're going to contaminate it. But I've, I've read about teachers actually taking the bread and wiping it on the desks, on the computer keys, cell phones, things like that and then labeling it and seeing, um, you know, how, because bacteria grows very well, as you know, um, on bread. Okay, let's see, what is next? Um, uh, so that's uh, kind of all as far as my uh, portion of, um, you know, the demonstrations. Um, if there's any questions, I can answer that. Um, now or I can wait until the end. Um, one document that um, I was going to share with you is this is kind of what we do as far as here at Blue Stem. Many of, so this document is called, um, it's just our community outdoor end days. Um, because of COVID, we can't really have any students here and we cannot really until October. But many of these that we do are checkout totes. So if you take a look at this paper, which again is in the Google Drive, it's a two-part paper. Um, you can look and if there's any of the, these that you know would fit into your lesson, your lesson plans or whatever, these are available to you um, to check out. On the back side of this page is um, Christy's name, my name, and Lily's name, all of our our contact information. We even put our cell phone, our personal cell phone numbers in here. I feel scared about that, but um, um, if you do to happen to text us, please give us a frame of reference of who you are and, and what you need and want. And we are texters, so um, feel free to do that. Okay, so with that, um, uh, Lily is going to share a PowerPoint with you, so I'm going to attempt to share my screen and I practiced this the other day so um, 
you can and while and while you're pulling that up i just want to let everyone know um, in case you haven't already um, heard us say this today we will be making the presentations available it will be the first week of august but everything that she's referencing we will send you links for that um, the first week of August um, after our sessions next week are finished. So just wanted to let everyone know those will be emailed out to you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Lily Elliott, and I want to talk to you about the benefits of having animals in the classroom. Um, Teaching children about animals in the classroom is, has a great impact on the development of kids. Um, they come in excited, they're ready to learn, they're more enthusiastic, and it exposes um, children to a higher sense of touch senses. It, it affects their senses. Um, it shows, it, it touches all, it, you know, it heightens their seeing, touching, smelling, and it brings, um, even affects their emotions. So, um, one thing about animals in the class, you can use animals in just about everything you teach, from science, um, you teach them where different animals come from, what snakes like to eat, uh, what, are the, what is in math, it's what is your rabbit way, what is the baby way, what is the difference, geography, what type of animal is found in what region. Um, students can also gain confidence from having animals, you know, in the classroom, and it doesn't mean that you have to have an animal in the classroom, but even just teach a subject about the animal and then maybe have someone bring an animal into the classroom. Um, there's a lot of support dogs out there that, you know, kids love, they light up when they see animals in the classroom and um, it teaches them a lot of different things. Um, not only does it use all of their senses, but it's, it gives kids confidence that they can go and take care of animals. Um, it teaches them about compassion, um, not only for the animal, but for their fellow students. It also in height, heightens them to be a kinder, calmer, and students learn to act um, better toward each other. Their actions are better. It also teaches them responsibility And, um, and it also shows, it, there's research out there that shows that in attendance is better if you, you know, teach about animals in the classroom. Um, one thing about if you need, if you are interested in animals in the classroom, the first thing you need to do is check with your administrators and your parents. There are a lot of kids that, well, there are probably kids out there that have some sort of allergies. Um, maybe, uh, you know, make sure your administration is on board about that. Um, if you're concerned about um, if you're concerned about your budget, there are grants out there that help support um, a lot of parents think that this is, you know, good for their kids and that they know that they learn better. Um, but the key to having um, animals in a classroom is sanitation. Um, if you're going to have any kind of animal in the classroom or bring animals in the classroom, there are certain things that you need to be concerned with. But first thing first is animals ha should have a certificate of health. Um, that way you know that we don't have any health issues prior to coming into the classroom um, and will affect your class. Second thing you need to be aware of 
is if you're going to um, bring animals in the classroom, you need to have a clean, dry uh, habitat for them. There's got to be a space for that animal to be. Um, and so uh, there's a space that they are they can be responsible for. Also, um, you need to have the proper equipment and you have a place to store it in a dry place. Uh, cages always need to be cleaned, and this is where uh, responsibility comes in for taking care of other animals. Um, and when you leave that animal area, you need to make sure that the cages are locked and the animal is safely uh, secure in its environment. And I rolled through that extremely <laughs> fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, I've actually, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna stop sharing. Let's see, you are sharing. How do I not uh, stop share? Here we go. Okay. Okay, so um, one more thing that I actually forgot to um, mention as, as far as like uh, germs and, um, you know, dim doing demonstrations or lessons in your uh, classroom. One uh, thing that's really handy, and I actually checked this out. Um, there's certain things like because you know in our kit we have probably five or six of these black lights or more we might even have ten I, I don't know um, but one thing that that's very cheap is um, tonic water that has how do you say it quinine in it I don't know but this actually fluoresces under a black light so um, I just have some of that in a spray bottle. It's not my water spray bottle, it's another one. So even with the, the sneezing thing that I showed you with the construction paper, you could do that and show under a black light, you know, exactly where the spots go. But I just thought that this was um, just very handy because, uh, and a cheap option. So if, you know, you wake up on a Monday morning and you go, I wanna do that in my classroom today, this is something um, you know that you can just go to the grocery store and buy. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, that's kind of most of what we have to share today. Do you guys have any questions for us? Um, any questions about Blue Stem and or how uh, we can service you as teachers? And if you could talk to them a little bit about how they um, actually get your the totes, check them out, yes. just make okay. sure everyone so, understands that. Sure. Um, so usually what we do, if, if you're very close to us, um, we usually have an intern or one of us will drive it to you. If you're very far away, there's been times when we've had to uh, ship things, um, you know, a long ways away, maybe to Tulsa or whatever. Um, we, uh, if you're able to, we ask, you know, we'll ship it to you, but then we ask you to share the cost and ship it back to us. Um, if that is not in your budget and that is a problem for you, we want you to have the tote. So, you know, then we'll take care of the cost because we want you to have it. But we do actually have um, probably at least 10 totes um, they're not all uh, science. We do have some history totes as well. Uh, we have one right here. It's called Fort Reno in a Box. And um, it's a very nice history lesson with all kinds of artifacts in it, um, all kinds of information and things like that. Um, within our totes, we try to do a lot of cross-curricular stuff. So we include math and writing and, um, you know, all of those things. But all you have to do to get a tote is just call us or email us and um, let us know, you know, when you need it. And we usually, the lessons usually are um, anywhere from maybe three days to a week. So we, you know, we let you keep it for a week or so, and then we get it back and send it all on its way again. Did I answer that? Yes, and can you just okay. tell them maybe some of your other totes in addition to the, the yes. science ones? Absolutely. Um, we have one on tree rings. That's very good. Uh, we have one on um, pollinators and butterflies. We have one about beekeeping. Um, 
let me put, I need to refresh my own memory. Um, let's see. We have uh, one that's kind of a forensics lab and it includes fingerprinting and things like that. Uh, there's stuff on uh, the food, uh, food web. Um, let's see. Pollinator. Oh, we have one on relative humidity. Um, we do one where they, the, the students simply make seed bombs and they get to keep it and you can feed birds. So we have, um, we have one that is a seed bomb with clay and then we have another one that, I, I'm sorry, I got it confused, that we have them make uh, pine cone bird feeders and then they can keep that. Um, we have one on, um, we call it skins and skulls, but we actually don't have any skins. We have different types of skulls that, um, for instance, there's, we have a carnivore, an omnivore, and an herbivore, and we talk about adaptation, the way their jaws are, the way their teeth are, and, um, uh, you know, the, the adaptations of their, their teeth. Um, we have another one that's very cool, cool. it's called cyan cyanotype, and it uses photosynthesis to, um, you use the sun to actually print. It has a, a, a chemical paper and you, it does a reverse print. So you put maybe a leaf or a flower on it. You let it sit in the sun and it turns um, everything else very blue. And when you take that away, then that's white. So it's kind of a negative image. Um, that's a very good tote. So you can bring in chemistry, photosynthesis, um, things like that. Um, let's see, we have one on the water cycle, uh, and that's, that's pretty much it as far as our, our totes go. You know that Blue STEM is, is here as a resource to you as teachers, and, you know, if there's any way that we can help you, um, you know, please call us because that's what we're here for. I want to share some of our new resources. Uh, these are for middle school and high school teachers, so uh, we feel like that you are going to be I'm interested in, in these, and let me get rid of this for you and go back here. Okay, um, so you should be able to see the engineering process right now. Some of you may have already seen uh, this resource that we had it last summer. So this is a worksheet that you can get for your students, and we also send out a classroom poster set for you to hang up. Um, but this helps students walk through the engineering process. So this is something that we have available. You can request them for free on our website. And I'll show you in just a little bit where that is at. Um, another new resource that we've added, this isn't necessarily new, but we've had the financial literacy um, cards. They're playing cards. So some of you might have the cards that look like this. If you don't, we can send a set to you. They're set up like playing cards, but in the center, they have financial literacy standards. So these would be great to use with your students to help teach them financial literacy, maybe to challenge yourself and see how financially literate you are as well. Uh, one of our other resources is the Oklahoma Red Dirt Groundbreakers. So this is a resource that we've had um, for several years, but we've added it to our website. So we haven't had it on the website before. You can request this. Um, we can send you copies for your students, and then you can also access it on the website. So this is great if you happen to be an Oklahoma history teacher. Uh, maybe you're wanting your students to do some research on um, Oklahoma and, and learn about some people that they're not as familiar with. To go along with this, we've just developed the red dirt symbols. And this actually uh, was created with third graders in mind, but it has so much fabulous information that your middle school and high school students would love it as well. And this one's brand new. It's just been added to the website and we actually don't have it at our office yet, but it is arriving, we believe next week. So um, you can go ahead and preview it. And if it's something that you would like to see, uh, then you can let us know about that one. Um, in addition, we've added student readers. So we have two that are specifically for older students. So this is the technology and agriculture um, student reader. 
and it talks about agriculture, how it has changed from hand plows to now using GPS and precision agriculture. I've enlarged it just a little bit so it's easier for you to see um, what it is, but it's just a um, four page student reader and then they'll take the information they can put it in order and it has some math questions for them as well the other one that we have that's like this for middle school and high school students is the thinking in pictures so this is with dr temple grandin and um, if you happen to be joined us yesterday for jocelyn puckett's workshop she used this lesson and turned it into a um, a Google activity for students. So um, you could use hers. If you did not make that session, you'll be able to check it out in August. Um, but also you could request these student resources to go along with it. In addition, you may have seen these because we did have them last summer, but does chocolate milk come from brown cows, which sometimes makes us all laugh because we know that it doesn't. But um, so many of the students don't don't realize that and they think it does come from chocolate milk and in fact a survey was done with american adults and anywhere from four to seven percent depending on which one you look at the adults in america think that chocolate milk does come from brown cows so we uh, developed this worksheet for your students they come in sets of 25 and all of our resources are free so you can request them anytime and then we have another one, the wool and cotton difference between the two. Again, we can send this one out to you. So lots of great resources. I'm going to show you where they're at on our website. So if you go to the Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom website, under resources, you can click classroom resources, which I've already done. And then right here, you can request the resources that you would like. We will um, send them out to you. Whenever you click on that, the form will pull up. You'll enter your information, the grade levels that you teach, how many students, and then we have all of our resources. And I actually need to change this image. I just realized the coloring book looks different than that. But we have them broken down um, by grade level. And so you can go through and see which ones are for middle school and high school. Or maybe you're joining us today and you're an elementary and early childhood teacher. We've got great resources for you as well. And you can find them all on the website. So that's how you do it. So I'm going to stop screen sharing now and I'm going to bring Melody back on with me. And Emily, if you'll join me. Um, we haven't had a chance to talk to you. So if you guys have any questions about Ag in the Classroom, specifically, uh, what we do, what resources we have. If you want to go ahead and type those in the chat box or in the Q&A, uh, we'd be glad to answer those for you uh, before we take our lunch break. So, um, Emily, do we have any questions coming in? We do. Uh, where are the seeds that we can order? Oh, good question. Okay, the seed packets um, are not on the website. And we realized that yesterday. So I am making a note right now. We'll get those added. But also, um, if you don't want to wait for me to get them added, which shouldn't take a really long time, but if you want to just email us, we can we can do that. But we um, we do have seed packets, and we'd be glad to get those to you. We are also updating. If you've seen this magazine before, you may have used it in your classroom. We're also updating this one. We're currently working with our graphic designer to get all that stuff put in. So it's still not quite out, but hopefully will be during the first part of the school year. Okay, great. Um, Cynthia has a great question. She said, um, do you think it would be possible to have a list of names or videos for us to share with students if and when we go virtually um, or folks we could Skype with since visitors and uh, visits off campus are out? Yes. I think that that would be something that we can create. And we have shared several things on our Facebook page, but we don't really have a centralized list so we can work on, on putting things together for, for people. Yeah, absolutely. Cynthia, that's a great idea. We appreciate that. Um, and also just know that we would be glad to visit your classroom virtually. So obviously 
We are um, set up to do Zoom now, and we would love to do a workshop session for all the teachers at your school to do training for them, but also for your students if you uh, need us to do that. And if you are doing a professional development at the schools and we would not be able to come in person, which we can travel, so that's up to your school. If your school wants us in person, we would love to be there. But if that's not an option, uh, then we can still do workshops with your teachers and either bring the resources to you ahead of time or after the workshop so that you have our great resources that we usually would bring with us. Um, along the same lines, if it's a student activity, uh, we would be glad to connect with you, let you know what the students would need to do the activity and then um, do the activity with them. We haven't done, done a session like that yet, but we're up for the challenge. We would love to try it. So just let us know. Any other comments? If not, we'll let you have a little bit early for a lunch break. All right, I'm not seeing any come in. Thank, thank you, you guys for joining us. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Thank you. I feel like it's been a great morning. Um, I've seen all of these people present uh, multiple times and still learned lots of information from them. So I hope you did as well.